so, so maybe this whole profession of oops, of a philosopher of science of, is is a bit of a fraud because they seem to be so far removed from their presumed subject. Yeah. Well, how does that relate to? I mean, let's talk about some well-known, well, fa let's say famous philosophers of science that that uh, people talk about, and and uh, how about uh, Popper and the Popperians, who arguably played, Popper I would say, played a big role in making philosophy of science uh, more broadly interesting and popular among social scientists, and you know, there was a debate, uh, and to, I mean, eventually the outcome of the debate was that there was no more interest generally in philosophy of science. But what about uh, Popper and the Popperians and then and, and Kuhn and Feyerab and, and the ones well, that have, yeah. You know, I think Popper has uh, two great uh, virtues. One is that he writes or he wrote clearly uh, with a minimum of uh, technical uh, terms. And he wanted to be understood because he thought clearly. And the second is that he was a very good defender of realism. Uh, but he had no common, he had no ethics. And so he was, his position concerning the physical sciences was very weak. For instance, he was very admit the existence of, part of the reality of the truth of part psychology. Uh, and uh, he <clears throat> was very angry with me when I wrote a paper criticizing the steady state theory in cosmology, uh, which possibly, among other things, that matter is being created all the time ex nihilo, from nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, so he said that it's a scientific theory because it is reputable. Yeah, many ideas are reputable, but you don't get in the one place for refuting, for instance, the hypothesis uh, of the existence of big food. You, you need mm, positive evidence in addition to that. For instance, if someone claims that uh, AIDS is caused by a certain virus, well, you have to show that the virus exists, and moreover, you have to show the effect it has on animals. And uh, you need positive proof, you need positive evidence, not only a negative evidence. If the belief comes with the idea that of <coughs> others, that there is a, a planet, a new planet called Uranus, well, someone, someone has to find it. It's not enough to refuse a very proposition, proposition that there are no plants in that region. You have to, to exhibit an image of the planet and so on so forth. So his negativism is uh, exaggerated. And, uh, <clears throat> but it's, it's also, yeah. it's also uh, uh, quite uh, unhelpful, or to say, not, say it's stronger useless, for a practicing scientist, oh. uh, yeah. which I actually experienced personally yeah. in trying to yeah. use the philosophy as, as my guiding yeah. Philosophy. And yet, Popper is the only philosopher of science that, uh, that philosopher that scientists read nowadays. is younger. They also used to read it in a quote, cool, but everyone has realized by now that the whole uh, cool uh, uh, thesis is, is a flaw. And uh, even also in the case of Fire and his close friends and followers. Uh, the idea that there are no standards, that anything goes, and um, things like that. <clears throat> so, uh, but uh, you, do you think those were that the Kuhn and Firearm were, in a way, uh, I don't want to say logical, but logical in quotation marks, outgrowths of Popper's philosophy? No, I don't think that uh, Feyerabend certainly knew Popper's uh, philosophy. He was Popper's assistant for, for, for a while, but he didn't have the um, patience 
all the intelligence to, <coughs> to study the things necessary to refute uh, proper effectively also he became a postmodernist, a total uh, <coughs> his rationalist. He says there is nothing to prevent the scientists from believing that there are ghosts and demons, demons, and, demons and so on and so forth. And he talked about the tyranny of science and uh, he was he had an artistic temperament, as you know. Once he, he called me <coughs> on the phone from Florias, saying he was very proud because he had just been offered the deanship of the School of Art, uh, of Music or Theatre, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. And as you know, he was for a while, he was in East Berlin trying to, uh, trying to learn Beth, Beth of Brecht, uh theater techniques and uh, he was a dilettante he was not a serious scholar he mm -hmm. was a dilettante mm -hmm. um, like, like many others most philosophers are dilettantes really. <clears throat> they read this and that they never uh, sit a few years try to work things out uh, there's no time they have to publish they have to uh, they have to Produce papers in order to get promotions and so on and so forth. Um, but in any case, uh, I think Fine Abbott has been forgotten for not not so cool. I could is say it'll be quoted and then you still have to, to argue with people. <clears throat> but then finally, as you know, Kuhn owes his celebrity to a thing that he has never done. For instance, during the student revolution in Germany, uh, students took his uh, book on scientific revolutions to be a revolutionary manifesto. They didn't know <laughs> that Kuhn was very conservative, that Kuhn was horrified by revolutions, and at least political revolutions. And of course, they didn't know that <coughs> there had been only two real scientific revolutions in history. So that's the birth of science in ancient Greece and second the scientific revolution of the 17th century, all others are breakthroughs, but not so recent because they have partial alterations, not uh, complete uh, <coughs> changes, complete changes in, in the world view. But in any case, um, no, I think Kohn was uh, a sincere guy, but totally confused, utterly confused, by his famous interview of uh, <coughs> the journalist uh, who went to my team and he asked him uh, oh, so you you believe that every time there is a scientific revolution the world changes the world says of course it changes and uh, do you really believe the second question do you believe that the world exists outside your your brain yes of course it does <laughs> it's all my compatibility the two things. He was very superficial. And uh, his analysis and Fire's analysis um, of the theory of relativity was totally wrong and it took just one for formula out of context and it was it was it was wrong, a wrong analysis. They didn't have a deep understanding mm -hmm. of science. But uh,